Um, I actually signed up for rugby before going to Settlers in, in Belleville. Um, so I definitely thought I was going to be a rugby player. That was the main thing in my household. Um, but yeah, and then making the Western Province under 13 hockey team, I just decided to take hockey as far as possible. I loved sport. So to make the first one in my family to make provincial colours in a sport was like massive. Um, and then I tried to like pursue it as much as I can. As you say, like I stayed at Settlers. Um, I had a very good team at Settlers actually. I had two guys who also played provincial under 13 with me that went through the ranks. So we were quite a good team. Um, but also I was, maybe I don't know if there was a little bit of fear um, of going to a bigger school on a bursary, or if it was just the fact that like I didn't see the need for it because like I was naturally I just worked hard to be the best. Um, so you know that's not something that you can get anywhere but with inside of yourself. So I was very comfortable at Settlers. I got everything I needed. Um, I had great support from Western Province Hockey as well um, and good backing. So yeah, that's why I decided to stay. Um, there was a teacher, Quibus Jonker, at my school. His son made the S under 16 team. So when I made my first national colours under 16, um, he was like, yeah, go for it, like don't hold back. And that's when it sort of became a real dream of mine, you know, because that's the first time I actually watched the Beijing Olympics for the hockey. Um, and then going through the ranks, I always made the teams. I didn't feel like I deserved to make it under 16. We were a squad of 40, and that's a lot of players. Um, but once I made it under 17, under 18, it was like a team of 18, 22. I really felt like one of the best. Um, and then yeah, going to varsity, you know, I knew a few national players. That's when you're playing against them and you're like, how the hell do you get to that level? They are so good compared to where you are. Um, you're under 21, you don't feel like you're near that level yet. Um, but yeah, and then I obviously made the Western Province B team from, from making S 21. So that was also knocked your confidence. So there's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, but that also just made me enjoy my hockey again and from there like I thought like flip I can do this You know what I mean? I can make the team um, Again making my debut. It was always something I wanted to, to do play for South Africa who doesn't want to do it um, But yeah, that was something special uh, my family flew up to Durban to actually watch me play and make my debut so Yeah, it was after that is like that first taste of singing your national anthem I mean we all grew up watching the Springboks play watching um, the prettiest play and like now you're one of those guys, you know what I mean? You're out there singing your anthem, so that was pretty special. Definitely my, my father has, has been there all the way in terms of just making me feel like I'm always the best player. I could have my worst game and he's just like finds fault in everyone but me. Um, but then I had my brothers there to keep me in track, you know, I played a lot of sports with them outside in the yard and they always made me, reminded me that I'm the youngest one. Um, so I always had to work harder to be better than them. Um, and they're always my biggest critics, which was always quite cool. Um, I think they still are though. I, I don't think I've got a tap on the back yet from them after a game. <laughs> it's always what you can improve on. But yeah, and then going through coaches, coaching wise, um, I definitely think there's probably three coaches that had a big impact on me. Um, Steve Evans is one, um, just in terms of the way he looked at the game. You know, he showed me support in a weird way, not ever blowing smoke, um, you know, but just backing me, I think that was a nice thing. Um, as a youngster coming through playing under him with the Western Province, he had this way of believing in me that I just felt it. Um, the other coach is Paul Devington. Uh, you know, his CV speaks for himself. Um, again, never gave you a pat on the back, but he pushed you, made you break boundaries. I mean, I spent, I think it was three years with him, and he always made me go that next step. Uh, he's the one who made me realize that your, your mind is only, the only barrier. You know, your body can do what your mind allows. Um, and then, of course, as you say, Bruce Jacobs is also very influential. Um, just in terms of being a mentor, you know, he's, he's led the national team. He went to Olympic Games um, and then to be coached by him. Also, he, him just backing me in the leadership roles, um, looking to me, you know, having those conversations all the time. Um, so yeah, so it's, I've been very fortunate with coaching, I must admit. I was actually in overseas when COVID hit, so I was busy playing in London to actually prepare for the games. Um, and obviously with the league stopping, you had to come home. And everyone knows if you're playing overseas, you sort of, you don't work. So you're going over there, you're earning some money just to come back to look after yourself over here. So that definitely put a little stop um, to everything in life, um, work-wise, Hockey-wise, you know, you're all of, almost in a sort of limbo. What I was fortunate enough to have was my master's. I was still working on my master's degree, so that gave me some sanity. Um, also, but like another thing is that support systems again. That's when your support system has to be the greatest. Um, and also self-discipline. So I 
I was fortunate to have my girlfriend train with me every day. Um, she sacrificed, um, and like we used to, like during the hard lockdown, we used to put a like an alarm on, like nine o'clock every morning. We'll do my gym workout or my plyometrics, and she just used, to, we used to do WhatsApp video call and do the workout together. Um, so it's quite funny, but yeah, that helped me through it, you know. Um, and also, like if you have a goal in mind, flip like Olympics could come once around. Uh, you don't want to mess that up by saying I'm gonna flip and just watch series or eat popcorn all day. So like, yeah, I mean, you, don't, you just get the chance once. It's a dream, uh, it definitely is a dream. Like it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's one of those things where you tick off a box and it's not the end of a journey, but it's all part of the journey. I, I never want to say that it's the ultimate goal in my life because there's more hockey to come from here. It's part of the step and part of the process. But yeah, I mean, it's the pinnacle of our sport. Um, you know, guys joke around that it's about getting the rings and the, the tattoos and all those things. But like, to get there, the hard work that you need to put in, um, you know, like that's when it becomes worth it. Knowing where you've come from, knowing how much work you've had to put in. I mean, everyone's journey is different. Um, but to be a part of like Team South Africa, to represent with the Wade Van Eekeks, the Castor Semenias, um, all of those sort of athletes who are world renowned, you know, to contribute to Team South Africa. I think that is exciting in its own. Yeah, of course, we, we had the less than ideal preparation. Um, firstly, with SA Hockey, we always under pressure with funding. So to get a proper, like, funds in place to have proper prep is one thing, but then to be hit with the pandemic in the same time is another thing. So we, do, we always have plans in place uh, to play games and you know you can only prepare if you're playing games. You know you can train as much as you want but to gauge where you are you need to be playing matches. And of course like a lot of other countries we were hampered in our prep. Uh, but we spent two and a half incredible weeks together. I mean we always struggle with contact time. But you know sometimes you can benefit more of off the field things than on the field. Uh, team culture is important. That's something we've been focusing on. Because I mean, at the end of the day, it's just the 16 of you guys out on the field. Um, so you have to be like brothers out there. And, and you know that you only get that if you're training together, if you're staying together. So yeah, we've been through a lot of the last two and a half weeks training and we're looking forward to more weeks uh, to get in the trenches. Um, and then we fly out to Tokyo on the 15th. Um, and then we play two practice matches, one against New Zealand and the other one against Spain. So they're not in our pool, so it makes sense to, to play them. Uh, maybe we meet one of them in the quarterfinals, you never know. <laughs>